Hello, welcome to day three on week 10 then. Just three more weeks to go today. And today we've got 14 races at three different courses in three different countries. We'll be in France, we'll be in Ireland and we'll be in England. And we start off in France with a continuation of the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe meeting. And the first race there today is the Prix de la Forêt. And that's a seven furlong group one. It's the only seven furlong group one in Europe for older horses, three-year-olds and upwards. And we've got the unbeaten King's Ghost, who's going to be the warm order in that one. King's Ghost, three runs, three wins. Looks to be pretty much nailed on for that one, I would have thought. Zoltan Kimesh for Darren Thompson looks to be in with a bit of a squeak, but I think they're uh, they're all running for second in that one. I think John Morgan can probably start counting his winnings on that race already. Race after that is the Prix de Cadran. That, of course, is the French Gold Cup, and that's two and a half miles. Group one as well, heavy going. We'll sort some of these out, I would think. We've got no Koyak probably down to the going, and Sergeyevich from the same stable, and Magical Retreat also from the John Morgan stable on the top two there they look um, streets ahead of the others and I'll be pretty surprised if John Morgan doesn't start the day off with a quick fire double warrior one for Sirius Chill will be tilting at a windmill like Sirius Chill likes to do but probably got a bit of a chance and Dal Sassion for Darren Thompson also could be in the mix but that looks pretty much like another John Morgan benefit race to me the next race at Longchamp is the Qatar Grand Handicap a 0-70 one of the lower grade races give a chance for one of the smaller trainers to get a win here and Kingstown Phillips for Darren Howes and Sister Gypsy are the two top weights both on 70 so plenty will be in there with chances getting some good Weight allowances. Fred over James Follis looks to be able to squeak, getting five pounds from the top weights. Gold is green for Carla Agante, and also Grey Lamy over there for Doug Warren look interesting as well. We're going right down to the bottom, there's a big field for that. I might get one or two traffic problems. JR, make your marks a previous winner as well. So there's plenty in there with chances in that one, but there could be one or two hard luck stories if you don't get a clear run. The final race. At Longchamp is the De Con Stakes. This is a Group 3 one mile one foot on race for two year olds. Millennium Most Wanted for Molly at Surfer is the top rated in this one, although Stephen Rand's Orleans Bell looks like it's got a pretty, pretty good chance for some good form. Revenge of the Pig for Joshua Sutherland has been getting closer over the last few weeks and is nicely rated as well. Treaty of Santiago for Paul Rose Hill. Fancy that one. And Dan Dare for Darren Howes is another previous winner. So wide open race that one to end the. Arc the Triumph Festival at Longshop. After that, we'll be across the sea and round the corner a bit to the Curra, where we will have six races, I think, from um, the Irish track. The first one of which is the Goffs National Stakes. It's a seven furlong group one for two year olds. Only a small field of six, but there are a lot of two year old races this week. Espiritu for John Morgan. Looks to be the warm order again there with three wins in the last four, but Molliet steps. Molliet Surfer must have a bit of a chance, and so must I am Kira, but it does look like it could be a good day three for the hilltop stables of John Morgan. The Irish St. Ledger is after that one, race number 30 of the week, and that's one mile and six furlongs. This race, of course, was opened up to older horses a few years ago, and a pretty good looking field. It's a small one, but it could be a pretty good race. Port Escapade for Django. Is the top rated one, which is a bit different for him because he's normally with the sprinters. Saint of the Moon for Darren Thompson looks to have a chance. Cricket Head, we're still waiting for that one to hit form. Hasn't managed it so far this season. The Star Lords for Joshua Sutherland looks the one to be on for me in that race. Then we go to race 31, which is the Flame of Tara Nursery. Another two year old race, of course, 0 to 90 this time over a mile. Then Lindsay Alacquians for Vinnie Gerard and Rainbow Lynn for Carla Ragante will be the two top weights. They should have a bit of a chance. Frighten off a grand clutter, but we'll be in there with a chance as well. Madness in the fast lane for Stu Gray. A winner two races ago looks to be one in there with a red hot chance. Race 32 is the Anglesey Handicap. This is a six foot long race, 0 to 85, and Wishful Secret for Carla Ragante is the top rated one. But the next rated horse is £10 lower, and that's Carla Agante as well, Lady Timbers. So has he done a little bit of careful planning there to keep Lady Timbers' weight down by putting Wishful Secret in? We'll wait and see about that, won't we? Chief Singer for Darren Howes looks like a bit of a chance. Warren Place for Mazad Mystery was a winner last time out, and that one is definitely Mazad Stable Star. I wouldn't be surprised to see that one go close again. Noble Lord for Darren Howes is another one that you wouldn't rule out with a chance in that Race number 33 is the Irish Field Handicap. Nine furlongs this time, 0 to 90. And Boju Eulis for Vinnie Gerard is a top rated one there. Bad Penny for Django is another one that looks like it's going to be in with a bit of a chance. Curtin Call was also a winner two races ago, should be in with a bit of a chance as well. A Middleton surprise for Alex Cherry was a winner last time. Magical place for Daniel French looks the one for me in that one though. And the final race at Curra, I think, is the Irish Selling Stakes. 
which is a 7 furlong 0 to 70 for two year olds. Little Wing is the top rated there at 70, but Zalano Fire, a winner last time, gets a handy three pounds, and that could be a good winner there for Alex Cherry, although Blue Play for Sirius Chill wouldn't be ruled out of that one, and that could be another one that's wide open. Back across to England then after that, and Salisbury, that's been in the news recently, of course, for all the wrong reasons, and the Stonehenge Nursery, nine furlong race, 0 to 70 for two year olds. Princess Cookie, the top rated here. There's nothing in there that's got particularly good standout form so that could be a wide open race and much mansell for james follish dirty hashtag for Stu gray anything's possible for serious chill we'll all be hoping to take that step into the winner's enclosure for the first time after that one we've got the avebury handicap which is a five furlong sprint again naught to 70 once again the form isn't anything to write home about really and um dirty mistress for Stu gray the bottom weight was second three races ago and that looks like it could be led in off a pretty easy mark in that one the final two races of the week are first of all the dogs and cats trust handicap which is a mile and a half naught to 70 grand opening is the top rated there bop it though has four figures of 0101 in his last four races so technically speaking should be O today but seems to be in form this doesn't look like a particularly difficult race and could give Stu Gray a good end to the week the biggest danger could well be Larwood Muzz for Doug Warren although in able for Darren Howes also looks like he might be running into a little bit of form and Belgian Street for Alex Cherry was a good second last time out the final race of the week is the Betfred Cesarowicz trial which is a good half a mile or so shorter in distance than the actual Cesarowicz so not quite sure what sort of purpose it serves as a trial as none of the horses that run in this race will be eligible to run in the Cesarowicz the top rated one there Chile Holiday shares top weight with Stony Miss, Carl Arganta and Darren Howes. They'll both be hoping for wins there. King Queen is also another one in there for Darren Howes, who's decently weighted. Break point for Graham Clutterbook. Bridesmaid also has been trying to run into a little bit of form, but Duck Swoop for Stu Gray. There's another one that looks like it could be doing well for him, so it looks like Stu may have saved his best bullets for the end of the week this week. You wouldn't rule out Mr. Kalani for Doug Warren either. And right down the bottom, Shelwick for James Follis, who's running off a featherweight and has been getting closer as well. So that's your week 10 then, and we'll see you next time.